The time has come for me to print all of the pieces for my Rogue One Tank Trooper helmet. Stick around to see how I sliced and printed all of these pieces to get them ready for assembly. Hey there fellow maker, welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill, this is Prop3D and we are continuing our journey using a cheap 3D printer to print a custom cosplay helmet. As a reminder, this series is dedicated to making a super cool prop using a really cheap 3D printer, the Anet A8. So far, I bought the printer, my wife and I assembled it, I did some safety upgrades, I did some quality upgrades, and now today, finally, we get to put together and print all of our pieces for this cool Rogue One Tank Trooper helmet. That helmet is a stylized version of the Tank Trooper. A while back, the incredible artist Aaron Farmer posted a super cool customized version of the Tank Trooper on his Instagram account. I fell in love with it, I contacted him and asked if he could flesh out the entire character, and he totally did. So that's the one that I'm making. I took his design and I modeled it up in Fusion 360. Autodesk has a really great tutorial on modeling helmets. I recommend you go watch that entire series so that you can follow along to model whichever helmet you wanna make. My design was modeled around some scaled reference photos of my head. This way I knew it would totally fit on my head once it was all printed. Of course, this entire helmet model wouldn't fit as one print on the Anet A8, so it needed to be sliced up into smaller individual pieces. Using construction planes inside of Fusion 360, I sliced it apart along areas that I thought would make sense for the printing process. I also modeled in some small holes along all of these lines. These would serve as holes to insert registration pegs later on so that we could knock all the pieces together and they would line up perfectly. With my files all modeled up and cut into pieces, I exported a bunch of STLs to get ready for printing. As far as the specific Cura print settings that I used, I just did a little bit of research online to see what a bunch of other people were using. I also had to make sure that I added a custom print profile for the Anet A8 inside of Cura. Now these print settings that I used could definitely use a little bit of tweaking, but they worked out okay for me. And also remember that I'm gonna be sanding the crap out of these pieces, so I'm not super picky. Plus, I didn't really feel like wasting more time and material doing more and more tests. So my settings were as follows. I went with a 0.2 millimeter layer height, 1.2 millimeter wall thickness, 0.6 millimeter top and bottom thickness, 20% infill, 190 degrees Celsius for the printing temperature for my Hatchbox PLA, 60 degrees Celsius build plate temperature, 50 millimeters a second print speed. I chose to use support only when absolutely necessary, and I used a five millimeter brim for adhesion. Speaking of adhesion, I used blue painter's tape on the aluminum bed. Before kicking off each print, I wiped the tape down with some rubbing alcohol to spruce up the surface. This did an amazing job of keeping the print locked down. And I know it's a bit of a pain to peel off of the finished piece, but I would rather it stay down for good and get a successful print than have it fall off five hours into a job. And of course, every few prints I'd have to refresh the tape, put some fresh stuff on there, because when you pull it off, it would rip the tape a bit. Now in Cura, I would rotate my parts until they were lying flat along one of the edges that I had cut in Fusion 360 because I knew they were perfectly flat. I also tried to rotate and position them in a way that would either use no support or as little support material as possible. The G-code got put onto the little memory card and I could run off to the A8 and start printing. The first thing I did was level the print bed and I did that before every single print. Then I would auto home the extruder and kick off my prints one by one. I made sure to babysit the first layer to make sure it went down nicely. If the bed wasn't high enough or level, I could tell that it was going to fail right away. So. I would stop the print, re-level everything, and start over. I found that so long as that first layer went down nice and strong, the prints would finish with very few problems. In fact, in the 16 pieces that I printed, I didn't have a single outright failure. The only major issue was one time when I saw the first layer overlapping itself. It turns out that a small shard of filament had fallen into the gear and the Y-axis motor, causing it to skip a few millimeters. Something else I did was to increase the flow to 150% during that first layer. This was probably overkill, but it ensured that a lot of plastic went down on that first layer to get it to really stick to the tape. Of course, once the machine moved up to the second layer, I would change that flow back to 100%. 
For some of the parts, printing with supports was absolutely necessary. This worked out okay for most of them, and not so great for others. This top rear part was printed upside down to save on time and material. The finish where the support touched down was pretty atrocious. Now, of course, I could fix that up with some bodywork and bondo later, but I printed the other side at a different orientation and it turned out much better, so I'll probably print that first side again. Overall, the print quality was fairly good. Again, I'll be sanding all of these parts, so I'm really not that picky. I'm just happy all the pieces finished without any major issues. Also, I was told by several sources that I should remove those Z-wobble brackets because they're actually probably causing more harm than good. I'll have a link to an article on that issue below if you'd like to know more. Either way, I took them off, but it is kind of hard to tell if things improved dramatically. Of course, since I used that blue tape, removing the parts was a little bit of a chore. I used a couple of flat metal spatulas to separate the plastic from the tape, and I tried to be as careful as possible. Usually the prints would take some tape with them, but I think that's a small price to pay for a successful print. Those registration holes that were modeled into the edges needed to be drilled out a little bit to remove any support material. I modeled them to be the same size as some finishing nails that I had on hand. Those nails were cut to length to be used as registration pegs. These pegs were used to line up each part so that they would all lock together for assembly. All 16 of these pieces took a total of about 94 hours of printing. And I went through almost two full one kilogram spools of that PLA filament. I've been running this machine every single day for the last couple of weeks to get all these pieces done. And so far I've been impressed mostly that the machine hasn't given up on me. And I'll tell you what, I am super stoked to get this all put together and finished up. Of course, I have a ton of sanding in my future, but that's okay. I'm still really excited to see how it's going to look. And of course, that will all be covered in the next video. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this series. I hope you're learning a little bit. And of course, if you have any questions or tips or insight to share, post it down in the comments. And as always, all the tools and materials that I use will be linked down in the description. I really hope you're having fun following along with this budget 3D printer build. And of course, if you're working on any cool 3D printed prop projects, please share them with me over on Twitter. I'm at Chinbeard. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. We'll be finishing this series up in the next few weeks. Plus, we have new prop and costume making tutorial videos coming out every single week. All right, I gotta go grab some sandpaper and get to work on this helmet. Thanks again for watching. See y'all in the next build and happy printing. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.